Hey guys, well, we're back with another episode of this uh, reefer, Red Sea reefer 625 XL or double XL or whatever it's called now, G2. Um, so still in the process of actually setting it up. Um, just gives you a quick update. I've just finished off the plumbing or the plumbing is now done. Um, but uh, what I'm going to show you just quickly is with regards to the return pump. Um, and just a little thing there, it uh, doesn't obviously mention it in the instruction manual and if you don't know, you don't know, but uh, you know, if you do, then kind of ignore what I'm about to tell you. Okay, so with regards to this piece of plumbing here, which is going to go into the far left and the far right uh, for the return, obviously it's connected and then it goes down and goes into the into your chosen return pump. I've got a Jebauer uh, MDC 10,000 litre per hour and if you want to see some more information on that then I've done a video on it. It's a beast, it's a great uh, pump, it's very quiet, really happy with it. Um, at the moment you can see I'm just using this flexi tubing because that's all I had on it before with the old uh, 425. Um, eventually I do want to hard plumb this section. Now question for anybody out here that's already done it, if you know the parts that I need for the hard plumbing for this end piece here and then also down obviously going into the actual pump itself and I've got all the little bits and pieces still in the box upstairs in the attic. Uh, if you know what I need for that, um, give us a shout out in the comments, uh, stick it in there um, and that'll be great. I really appreciate that. Thank you very much. But for now, I've got this uh, flexi tubing. Um, now a little trick if you are struggling to get the flexi tubing onto the little end pit uh, end bit here Then you just use some boiling hot water You put this into the boiling hot water and it softens it all up and then you can hopefully get it on um, a little bit easier also the other thing is obviously using a decent saw and not a saw that I have um, <laughs> So get a good saw and not a crap saw like Simon but you want to cut the smaller piece off. So if your flexi tubing, if you're using flexi tubing, is larger than the first little bit that was on here, make sure you cut it off because it will restrict the flow otherwise. But yeah, get a better saw than I had. Uh, it, that was a bit crap. Anyhow, that's off now. That's job done. This is all connected. I've got some various wire ties down there. I am going to wire tie this up now before I uh, lift it into the uh, sump as it is. And then I can then get these connectors on the ends here uh, and that will slide up and then screw onto what is actually left in there. Look, onto that piece there and then obviously onto that far right hand side one. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Um, I'm going to then start getting the sand into the tank um, and then start filling up with the water that I've got that's like lukewarm kind of... Um, What's it, ambient temperature? Um, and uh, I'll chuck a couple of heaters in, make sure it gets up to the right temperature. And then once it's at the right temperature, I'm then gonna start putting my rock in and the corals. Maybe the water will be, I don't know, about here, um, somewhere, maybe halfway up. Start getting the rock in. Once all the rock is in, bang a wave maker in. And then I'll probably leave it then, you know, and I'll probably get the fish in the following day. But, uh, I'm, I'm in no rush. They're doing well. I've just topped it up as well with some um, RO water. I did put a little mark on the side of the tank there where the water level was when I put the fish in. Um, and I did the same with the two containers with the rock and corals and what have you. So I've been topping them up. Keeping a check on the nitrates with my Hannah checker. Keeping a check on the ammonia that's in there. And just good visual with the fish as well what's their behavior you know what are they doing um they all seem to be doing very well so i'm gonna maybe try and set the camera up on the tripod and do a bit of a time lapse uh while i'm getting the sand in and like pumping the water and stuff in but if it doesn't look very good when i get to the editing stage then you won't see it Right then guys, so we're going to put the sand in now. Um, I've got my three bags of uh, you grab one, Carob Sea. All I've gone for uh, is the live sand by Carob Sea. Uh, careful with the scissors, don't want to punch it just yet. Fiji Pink is the one that I've opted for. Now I've gone for three bags. Probably should have gone for four. Don't know, well, it's costing enough anyway. 
So if I've gone for three bags, I can always add another one if I want to in the future. Um, now with this, I'm just gonna cut the top off and I'm just gonna dump it in. Uh, sort of spread it around maybe a little bit, but I'm not too worried about it, because then I'm gonna start adding the water. Now obviously there's different ways of adding sand. Um, I've already done a previous video where I've actually added sand to an existing tank because it's been depleted or I just wanted to top it up a little bit more, you know, whatever it might be. So if you're looking at how to add sand um, when the tank is already full of water, then go and see that video and it will talk you through some different sort of options and ways of doing it and then it shows you the one obviously that I do. But for this nice and easy empty tank, I'm just going to dump it in. Um, so hopefully from now on, it might be on a time lapse, so fingers crossed that that works. <laughs> Let's get cracking. got a decent amount of water in with the sand. Now, that was all kind of technically cold, ambient, room temperature, whatever you want to call it, uh, water. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put, got some heaters. These are the ones that are normally connected um, to the ink bird, which is outside that just runs my salt water mixing station. Um, but I'm going to link these up with the normal controller, what's this, uh, Simply Aquaria um, dual temperature controller. So I'm going to plug them into this, this is already set up, 26 degrees, plus 0.3, sorry, minus 0.3, um, and either the, the heat is kicking or the, uh, the fans kick in. Put them in the tank, get this water then warmed up, um, so I can then start to transfer over the rock and the corals that's down in front of me. Right. Next job, another piece of the puzzle, put in, we'll get there eventually. So they're in, going to get a, a wave maker chucked in at the other end, pointing up, not because I need oxygen or agitation of water, but if it's, <laughs> if it's pointed down or straight ahead, it's probably going to blow up the sand, so I want to try and minimise that as much as possible. Um, you probably didn't see, because it was too fast in the... Um, uh, what's it called? When everything goes really, really fast. Time lapse. Um, I've taken out two of these already. These come in with the bags of the live sand, um, but I'm not going to put them in. But I've got one more to find in there. So remind me, if you don't see me take it out, make sure you put a comment in the comment section below. Did you find that third clarifier? Because nowadays, my memory is, well, it's like a calendar. <laughs> you just literally pause out. Right, enough talking. Let me get that wave maker in. Right then, guys. So I just thought I'd bring you in for a bit of a closer look. Probably uh, sick of looking at my ugly mug anyway. Uh, yay. That's me, boy. Reef drama. Anyway, um, we've got the wave maker in, as you can see. The uh, Jay Bauer. SCP 120, but that's literally just to kind of give it a bit of circulation in the tank. Well, reflection, sorry guys, because uh, I've got the two heaters in there. Um, can't see the, the light on the second one, but it is, it definitely does work. And you've got beeping, and that's because, and hopefully you can make that out, that started at 19 dead. 
um, oh look at that, it's just dropped, but a 90, so it's, it's gone up by about 0 0.5, 0 0.6. Now that's going to keep beeping until it gets up to whatever temperature it was that I set it at um, as that uh, audible uh, warning alarm that the temperature is, is dropping. I probably set it to, I don't know, I'm guessing maybe 23, something like that. Um, so that's going to keep beeping till then, so that's, that's fine, that's all right. That's going up. Um, we've got the Senai, which I've got in the tank with the fish are. Uh, so that's 26.280. So 26.3 nearly. So that's great temperature. Uh, let's have a quick look at the fishies. Yo, piney. How's it going? Yeah, no likey. No, I oh, know. Fox, not too bad. Um, a little bit skittish, probably to be fair, you know, it's, well, it's a small tank. It's not, I mean, what is it? Three feet wide by probably a foot or something by a foot or something. Um, so it's definitely not, uh, not what it's supposed to be doing. This really is just my quarantine stroke, um, hospital tank. Uh, so, uh, so yeah. But uh, clownfish in the back there. I did put a rock in there for them with some of their mushrooms on that they like to uh, mess around in and sleep in and breed on and whatever else. But they have taken a shine now to that heater. <laughs> Obviously warmer. Um, Bengai cardinals in the back hiding. Can't really see them. And the, yeah, just disappeared. The, um, there, there she is. Oh, what is that? Damn, I keep forgetting. Coal beauty, flaming fish. Um, and then that that's it. Oh, and the wrasse, where's the wrasse? Don't tell me he's jumped out. Oh, there he is, all the way out the back there at the top. Gone down to the bottom. Yeah, keep missing him, but he's a fast little bugger. Uh, nitrate, still there, ready to do another test before I go to bed tonight. Uh, ammonia, little sticker there is fine. I've been topping up the auto, uh, not the auto top up, but I've been topping it up manually. With the um, with the RO water, uh, wow! Look at that! I got the lid off this box because I took the wave maker out of it. Um, going through my equipment kind of container at the moment. Oh, the sump containers and everything else in here. So how are we getting on? Well, I messed up a little bit. I forgot to put my other cups in some of the salt water behind me uh, where the rocks are. So of course they've all dried up now and gone all horrible. So I'm gonna um, chuck them into some citric acid and clean them up at some point. But for now, I'm just using the two brand new um, Red Sea socks. I think they're 225 micron, could be wrong. But anyway, two socks, don't like them, but they won't be in there for long. Two brand new cups, got the silencers um on here as well just twist them around look at that ocd they've all got to be facing the same way um so these silencers seem to be quite quite nifty and just basically stick them on top of the sock or stick them on top of the the uh cup and you know, supposed to silence it um we've got all the plumbing in i didn't show you i don't think but all the plumbing is in um and my awesome sump light which i still yet to show you i've got the uh the uh, what's that? The level keeper, reef factory level keeper, over there, and I've got the grow light there for the Cheeto when that goes in. The um, stand for the skimmer is there, and obviously the skimmer cup. I need to clean the rest of the skimmer body before I can put that in. Um, empty cabinet at the moment, but look at that. What I'm forced to do again is put that metal bracket, fix it all the way down at the bottom and at the top there. And that is what is holding my light bracket. And those two there, look, that one and that one, is uh, is what my light bracket is on. Uh, talking of which, let's have a quick look at that. Obviously I haven't hung the light on it yet, um, but uh, yeah, when I do, it's gonna be slightly higher, I'm hoping slightly higher above the water than what it was before. But look at this guys, check this out. So this is Evolution Aqua bracket, right? Look at that. Don't look at that M1, it's slightly on the pitch, but I need to sort that out. But this closest one is dead straight, going up the back of the back of the tank. 
back of the the, uh, the cabinet. And then if you come into where, let's see with my finger, roughly where the light, center of the light is gonna hang, it's gonna be there. So yeah, that's, yeah, that's not half, is it? That that's That's definitely not half. It's more than a third, but it ain't half. So whatever is between half and a third. Uh, so we'll have to see how that goes. But I physically cannot extend that anymore. It's right on the ragged edge, look. Right on the very, very edge. So um, may have to change brackets, I suppose, at some point in the future. Um, but I've given myself quite a bit of space around the back. I've fitted the, uh, the bracket on again that I had on before just to house my electrical... Um, power strips and stuff and I've got a cover that uh, sits over the top of this as well so if any splashing happens uh, then it's covered and it doesn't get wet again I've done another video on that if you want to go and see that then you can go and find that in the list of videos um, otherwise I think I think I'm gonna call it a day 19.7 uh, I'm gonna have to come out of this lounge because that beeping is gonna drive me up the wall um, probably do a little bit of a tidy up um, over here. I've got all the lights um, So that light obviously go back up that one. I won't be using uh, I'll keep that for now And then I've just got all the other kind of like wires and stuff for everything else. I don't know what those two come off of I didn't uh, didn't mark them like with that one marked that one marked this one marked even that but them two, yeah, your guess is as good as mine. So lovely. Got to try and work out what that's all about. Maybe one of them is for this thing. I've got that still to go on. I've got the fan, the one fan there, the other fan is down there. But yeah, again, I'm rabbiting. Whew, I'm all hyped up. It's, uh, it's been a day. But anyway, um, I'm going to put the camera down now, do a bit of tidying up and I'll pick it up tomorrow and we will be putting the rock into here because by then it's going to be nice and warm and up to temperature and can handle then the rock and the coral going in. Then it will be a bit more water, fish and then it can start to overflow and go down into the sump. Right then guys, thanks for watching up to this point and I will see you when I pick up the camera next. Say night night, piney boy. Look at him. I've not fed him, I think I've said, I've not fed any of these fish since they've been in here, but that's fine, they'll be all right. But he's probably bloody hungry. Night night. Hey guys, so quick update then, so the water in the tank uh, is uh, all nice and up to the right temperature, um, so what we're going to do is get the rock now into the tank, uh, then I can start putting the water that's in with the rock into the tank and start getting it filled up a little bit more. Right then guys, so just another quick update, um, I have got the rock in, the water is still quite sort of cloudy from the sand it was just a nightmare to see i couldn't literally see what i was doing so uh i have got the light up as you can see there i've put that up um the fish are all still doing fine there no problem in there i just thought you know what i'm just going to put the rock in it's more about the welfare of the animals uh, i can rescape this another day not worried let's just get it in um and uh you know start setting up the equipment so we've got the skimmer in um, we've got the new reactor as well, so I've gone for a new um, aqua medic a reactor there. I think that's the medium sized one that's going to do my nitrate pearls. And I've also got another new reactor that was supposed to have been delivered with that one. But that's a TMC one that I'm waiting for, um, and that's just going to do the Roafoss. So for now, all I'm going to do is going to put some Roafoss into a bag. I know it's not brilliant, but it's all I can do. And I'm just going to put the bag of Roafoss into one of those cups. That will do for now. Uh, tank is still cloudy, obviously, but that's because the the filtration system's not working yet and nothing is going through, you know, any of the filter floss or anything else that's going to be down there. So that's when that will clear up. Um, but uh, once I've got all the rock in, which I'm pretty much there now, I'm going to check salinity, check temperature, um, and then I'm going to start transferring the fish in because I need the rest of that water. 
um, and I've also got some water down here as well. I need then to pump that in, so that's sufficient enough then to take it up and over. As you can see, I'm almost at the top of the weir. Um, so that will be enough to take it up and over and then start coming down into the sump and start filling this up. Once this is filled up, I can then turn on the return pump, which I've wired in at the back there, uh, get the skimmer on, although that will probably be going mental, but that's fine. I'll just let it kind of um, overflow uh, for now. And, uh, and then I'll, I'll get some nitrate pills in here and get that on. Uh, and of course the bag of Roafoss that I've mentioned already. Last little quick look at the fish. And I'm going to sign off for now, and I shall come back as soon as I uh, as soon as I can for you, and give you another update. Hey guys, so we're back, and well, hopefully, as you can see in the background here, uh, the fish are in, and uh, we're all up and running. So thank goodness for that. Uh, apologies for not picking up the camera and sort of showing you uh, the transferring of the fish, um, but you know I was. A bit worried about doing that and trying to do the camera and worrying about shots and where the camera is and what you're going to be seeing and all that sort of stuff and I, and I just thought you know what I, it's more important just to get the fish in make sure they're happy and uh, and and uh, and yeah just give you an update afterwards so that's what I'm doing right now and uh, I'll flip you around in a moment and give you a bit of a better look uh, but uh, as far as everything is concerned the fish went in fine we had two we had two fatalities, unfortunately. We did lose two livestock. One of the Bengai Cardinals didn't make it um, through no fault of me or through the Bengai Cardinal, but because of him. Right there, look. Oh, went the wrong way. Piney. Yes, I know he's a predator fish, but you know what? He's lived with these Bengai Cardinals for, well, quite a while now. But um, what happened anyway was uh, I was leaving Piney to last before getting him out of the temporary tank before putting him in the big one. And uh, I transferred over, I think the, the rats went over, the clowns went over, the um, coral beauty went over. And as I was coming back to get the Bengai Cardinals, because they was going a little bit skittish, Piney thought, hmm, lunch. And yeah, unfortunately he got one and that was it. Uh, so he got fed for the first time in about two and a half days that he was in that temporary tank. Um, uh, so that was a shame, a bit gutted about that because now I've just got the one Ben guy left in the tank. Uh, so he's not paired anymore. Uh, and the other fatality was the cleaner shrimp. Um, it just died. Uh, I mean, I had two, got them both at the same time. One of them died about two or three weeks ago, and and then this one went as well. So uh, yeah, that's that that's that's where it, that's where we're at. So two losses, one Bengai cardinal, and uh, the second one was the cleaner shrimp. But otherwise, apart from that slightly sad news, um, everything else is doing really well. And as I say, I'm going to flip you around now so that you can see it. All right then, so here we go. So everybody's in, uh, as I just mentioned, we've got Fox over there. We've got, yeah, Naughty Piney. Uh, two clowns at the back. They kind of don't really know what to do. I don't think they've necessarily found the mushrooms that they normally used to, uh, used to love sort of playing in and around and, and whatever. But um, yeah, so she's not really found them i don't think so they're a little bit lost at the moment cleaner rash just there look pick him up and uh ah oh, there's the one single ben guy at the back bless him i don't know if that's benny or jerry but anyway uh, oh and there goes the um the coral beauty and there she is as well below in the sump as i said before we've got the bag of roa foss uh in there in that uh in that sock the skimmer is on, um, it's not really a dirty, dirty colour yet, but um, I need to sort of still fine tune that. And then I've got the nitrate pearls there uh, in the reactor. Uh, this is a Senai holder. What's on the front here, it's magnetic thing, Senai holder. So that's probably where the Senai will end up, is in the sump, as long as I've got enough lead to get it up to the laptop. Um, what else in the back here? Obviously, we've got the 
return pump and I've also got the two uh, two lots of um, nanotech bio balls in there as well. Uh, my little box down there with some loose kind of mushrooms and what have you on some few little pieces of tiny rock. Uh, oh, and of course the Chato, which is over the back, Cheeto, Chato, however the hell you pronounce it, that's in there as well. Nothing really going on in this side. I've got to fit like a shelf in here or a false back maybe to put some of the controllers on. And I've just got my um, auto doser in there, dose in the alkalinity, which is, which is there in that little bottle. Um, so that's pretty much it. Oh, I'll tell you what I have just built and I've just made the lid. So it's a bit of a, a cheaper version to the one that I had before on the 425 because obviously I bought that from uh, Reef Tops and uh, I most likely will get another one for this tank at some point but yeah I've already uh, chucked quite a bit of money at this already um, but what I did get was this look I just bought the DD uh, jump guard uh, DD aquarium cover jump guard whatever you want to call it. Um, so I've just built that and just fitted that onto the top there. Uh, and of course I've got a problem now with my feeders. So I've got one which does the pellets, has to sit all the way up there at the moment and just sort of drop the pellets straight down. And the other one is offline. I'm just going to have to hand feed that um, every day as so long as I kind of remember. Um, so yeah, we're all right. I think we're pretty good. Quick look at the temperature over here on the Senai. We've got 25.9 and down on the um, uh, temperature controller, 25.9. So, you know, that's nice and bang on. My level keeper has put some water in, but it hasn't for a little while. Um, that's probably because I've had the water going up and down where I've turned the pump off a few times and turned the skimmer off and whatever else. But so we're all right. We're not too bad. All right, let me flip you around back to me again. All right then, guys. Well, thanks very much for watching this little sort of mini series. I've done it in two parts just because a bit too much to put it into one part. But uh, thanks very much for watching along. If you have any questions, if you have any comments, please put them into the comment section below. Like the video, share it. That would be awesome if you can do that. And of course, don't forget, if you're not already subscribed, then please subscribe to my channel. Uh, it really does help out and keeps me, as I've said before, motivated to keep going and doing this. Bye for now. Is it gone? Is it gone?